Hey everybody, how's it going? Christian with the ACSL lesson series here. We're going to be going over data structures for the American Computer Science League and preparing for those tests. So there are going to be four different types of data that we're going to be learning about and covering. They are stacks, queues, binary search trees, and priority queues, though we pay attention less to priority queues. And we're also going to have a fair amount of questions at the end that we'll go over, but we'll start with the stacks. So stacks have two things that they use, push and pop, and a stack is essentially an ordered set of items. When you push something, what's ever in the parentheses, so in this case A, will be added to the top of the stack, and then pop X, it will always say X, removes the top item from that stack and stores it into X. So as a side note, if the stack is empty, X will be given the value NIL or nil. So here's an example for us. We'll start out by pushing A, M, and E, so that's at the top. We then pop X, and since E was the last one in, it's the first one out. So now we've got A, M. We push R, then pop X, which removes the R, and then we push I, adding I to the end. Then we're going to pop four times, and as I was talking about earlier, there are four pops and only three letters, so we end up removing this is in the wrong order, it goes I, M, A, and then we have an empty stack and then we pop it, so then nil is, is stored there, and then we push C, A, N at the end, so the final string is C, A, N, and our popped items in order are E, R, I, M, A, nil. Now cues are pretty similar, also use push and pop, as I was talking about before, same deal, but the difference is that it's first in, first out, so if you have for example, the same thing. When you start with AME, when you pop, you will pop from the beginning. So the new strings ME after you pop X and that pops the A. Then you add an R, so it's MER, you pop X and that removes the M instead of the R this time. Next up, we push I and making it ERI and then we pop four times, but instead of going back, you know, from the start as we did before. This time we pop E, R, I, and then nil, same thing after it's done. Then we add can, so our final string is can, C-A-N, and our popped items in order are A, M, E, R, I, nil. Here we've got our intro to binary trees. There's a fair amount of things that we're going to be learning about them, but as I said, it's a way of storing information. So if you want to make a search tree for American, you will add A to the top of the tree, and then you when you add M, the binary tree can only have two children, so either it goes to the left or to the right, and it'll go to the left if it's lower, and it'll go to the right if it's greater, and if they're equal, it'll also go to the left. So A, there's nothing that's going to be lower than A, everything will be higher, so the M will go to the right, and as we'll see later though, again, if it's equal, it goes to the left, so that's why that's there. Next thing we do is we add E, so it's later than the A. So then it'll be compared to M, but since it's before M, it gets put to the left as a child of the M node. Next we add R, but it's greater than both A and M, so it'll be to the right of the M node. Next up we do the same process with I. It's greater than A, then it is lower than M, but it's greater than the E, so it goes to the right of the E as a child there. C has the same process, except it's less than E, so we put it to the left of E. And then we try A. And again, that's the thing to remember. If they're the same, it goes to the left. So now A will be to the left and lower side of the original A. And the last thing we do is add N. This is more than M, but less than R. So it goes to the left as a child of R. Then there are some more advanced things to consider about binary trees. So we call the root the very top letter, call the depth or the height the number of levels, so in this case it would be 3, as it's 1, 2, 3, and you can think about that like the most amount of children or steps down. The leaf is a node with no children, so here that's A, C, I, and N. A has two children, so does M. R only has one child, so that's, you know, as I was saying, that's what a child is. An external node are a place where a new node can be attached, so A has two of them, C has two of them, I has two of them, N has two of them. R, though, already has a node and can only have one added below it to the right, so that's only one, so there's nine total here. 
internal path length are the sum of the depths of all nodes. So here's one, two, this is a two, so it's a four, six, and then you have eight, and then you have nine, because it's a three, 12, 15. External path length is the sum of the depths of all external nodes. So as we were saying, there's two on A, those would each be two, and then there are two on C, which would each be four. So you add the, all those up and you get 31. Another term to know is comparison. So that's when something is compared. How many times does N get compared? There are three comparisons, one with A, one with M, and one with R. So we say that N has three comparisons. So there's also something called traversals. In order traversal will just be in the alphabetical order. Pre-order traversal is a little bit different. You start with A on top, then you go to A to the left, and the next one will be M. Then you go to E, C, I, and then now that we've done all of these four, you go to the right, and so it's R and N. Then lastly, we have post-order traversal, which is in the order of left-right root, and the left is A, and then if you take a look at the right here, that's going to be M, but that has a left and a right, and then that also has a left and a right, so we start with C, the right is I, the root is E, and then we go over here and we go to the right of M, so that'll be N, then the root of that is R, the root of that is M, and the root of that is A. So it's a little complicated, tricky. Maybe do some examples of that. So now we have some discussion on deletion, and it's from the American example before. So if you delete I, it would have been sticking out right here. There's no children of that, so you just remove it. There's R, as you see over here, it's R, N. If, it's, if it only has one child, you just move up whatever the child was, and that's what it looks like. And then over here, if it's something with more than one child, so in this case it's this M here, what you do is you replace the left side and move it all above, and then you put the right root underneath. So that's what it kind of how it works. So the father is A, um, you've got the left child of, of M being ECI, and the right child being RN, and then you delete M, you put the left child, which is ECI, and then you stick the RC onto LC. So that's, again, a reiteration of what I was saying. And next we'll be talking about heaps. So it's a little bit different from the binary search tree, but basically this is for America. Start with an A, and you have to fill up all the spaces, so you put an M, and it just goes to the left. It doesn't matter how they compare, but then you do compare them. However, M is not less than A, so they don't switch places. Same thing happens to the E over here. E is not less than A. R is not less than M. But once you have I, it would normally be inserted to the right root of M, but the I then gets compared with this M, and since I is less than M, they switch places. Same thing happens when you insert a C over here, it gets switched with the E, so the E is now the, the root and the C is father, and then you have the same thing going on with the A, and it will replace the C. And you can also do insertion, so here we have American on our left, and then if you wanted to insert a C, again, that you'd put it right where I'm showing here with my mouse, the C would go here, and then you compare that C with the N, and they switch places. And then you compare that C with the I, and they switch places as well. And it looks like this. So now we've got four questions covering different topics, though not all of them. So here's a pre-order question, and the way that they're asking. So you visit the root, and each of the subtrees from left to right. So what order would the nodes be visited? So the start with A, and then you go down the subtrees, so then you begin with BD, then it'll be E, and then it'll be FHI, and then at the end, you'll go to the right and you'll see C and G. So our answer is A, B, D, E, F, H, I, come all the way back up, C, G. Here we've got a binary search tree question, so you list all the nodes that have two children in the binary search tree for great expectations. I'm not going to do the step-by-step -step on constructing the search tree. That's what it looks like, though. And again, this is not a heap, so there can be some weird kind of constructions. Two children means that there are two nodes one level down from it, so that 
would not be like this E having two levels of children, but rather this A, where it's an A and an E, or this G, where it's E and an R. So we identify those as being the G, the A, the R, and the T, and those are the answers. Here we have which of the following binary trees are valid binary search trees. So A definitely works. You know, the C is greater than A, so it goes to the right. The S is greater than the C, so it goes to the right. The L is greater than A, greater than C, but not greater than S, so it goes to the left. B also works, you know, for similar reasons. You can kind of look at it and see why. But then C will not work because the N seems misplaced. R is correct, O is correct here, but this W should be to the right of the, the R, and the N should also obviously have been a left child of the O. D works, there's no errors there. And then E will also have an error because the S works, the A and the Z are proper, the M looks good, but the Q is not greater than Z. So final answer is A, B, D are valid. And our last question is going to be quite a long one. It's a stacks and cues one. So they've defined rev, R-E-V, as reversing the items in the list. And this is going to be a queue question. So you start with the, the queue form, and it's not going to be a stack. So here we start with pushing C-A-R. Then we pop the C which is, you know, coming first, it's Q, so it's, it's like a line. The first person who goes in the line is the first person to come out. Then you reverse it, so that'll make it RA. Now we're on to pushing VAN, so it's Ravan. You pop X, so that's R, so now it's Avon. Then when you reverse it, it's NAVA. You pop X again to get AVA, and then you're pushing CYCLE, or cycle, so that's like AVA cycle. Popping X will remove that first A, then you reverse it, so it's now E-L-C-Y-C-A-V. It's got to keep all this stuff. It's a little bit tricky, so you got to just keep yourself in order, basically. Then we pop X twice here, reverse, and then pop X again, so that becomes C-Y-C-A-V. You reverse it, V-A-C-Y-C, and remove the V, so it's A-C-Y-C. And then you go on, you add T-R-U-C-K by pushing those, so it's ass like truck. You reverse that and then pop the first two items, giving you U-R-T-C-Y-C-A. Lastly, we reverse, make it A-C-Y-C-T-R-U, and then you do this sequence of pop, rev, pop, rev, which pretty much will remove the ends. And what that achieves is that we are left with CYCTR, so our next pop, which is the question, will be C. So thanks for watching the presentation. Hope you learned a lot.